Synology has made a massive choice that I actually did not think they were going to be making, and they are going to be requiring Synology drives on all 2025 and beyond plus models. So Synology Germany just had a blog post that has a massive shift on Synology's policies. And it also explains why all the 2025 models, like the DS1825+, Plus, the DS925+, Plus, and all of those models that we've been expecting to see for a really long time now, have not come out. Synology is going to be requiring Synology drives on all 2025 plus models. And this is a huge shift from where they have been the past many years, where they were only requiring this on the really kind of business and larger enterprise models. Okay, so what happened? So a few days ago, Synology Germany, and by the way, this is translated, I think it's now on Synology's site translated. Synology Germany posted a blog article in their newsroom that due to the utmost success of the high performance series, they will be now requiring Synology storage media for the plus models to be released in 2025. What this means to you is while you used to be able to bring your own hard drive, buy your iron wolves, whatever, you now have to use the Synology drives if you want your volume to be created and not have any warnings or anything like that. In theory, even for something as simple as a 225 plus, a simple two bay model will now be requiring Synology drives. And this is a huge shift from their policy that we've kind of seen them slowly be adapting the past few years. So this policy has been growing ever since like the 2020s, where slowly they've been adding more and more drives to require these. First, it started out as pretty much just the enterprise unit, just the ones with more than 12 bays in them, and that was it. And then they started adding some of the excess models. And now they're going in and they're bringing it to all the plus models who will be requiring them, which is the vast majority of their product line. From reading this, it does look like the J models will be exempt, but I have a feeling that those are just going to be replaced by the B station models anyway. So I think really Synology is making a major shift to only their own hardware here. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, our web developer, Visagio & Co. If you remember about a year ago, SpaceRex went through a massive rebrand. We got new logos, new website, and we spun off the Yarbrough Technologies as the consulting arm. This was all done through Matt and his team. We met with them often to go over what we thought would be best, and they really helped us build an entire business plan and really think through the pros and cons to every single one of our decisions, all while also building us out logos, new colors, new fonts, and an entire website. I cannot recommend them enough, and I think their work absolutely speaks for itself. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, check out Visaggio & Co. in the link in the description. They have web development packages starting from just getting started all the way up into high-end projects, marketing, and entire rebranding. So check out Visaggio & Co. in the link in the description, and thanks for sponsoring today's video. And so that is a huge shift. And it's a huge shift, especially for your home labbers, your tinkerers, and your home users who are really looking to build something themselves in a cost-effective manner. I'm not sure it's going to have a major effect on businesses, mostly due to the fact that a lot of businesses already were subject to this, and businesses have a larger budget in general to be able to get these drives and not really have it be a major effect. And we'll talk about that all later. But the other thing that they're adding in here, which is just as major, is now they're talking about how you may not even be able to create pools. And that is a huge shift. So currently, if you want to, you can stick in any hard drive into any NAS, and you can tell the Synology, hey, create a pool. And it will create that pool. Though it will stay and it will flash orange warning all the time. However, now it's looking like there will be more and more things such as the creation of pools, which literally means creating anything, you won't be able to do it. They're also talking about how volume-wide deduplication, nobody really uses that, lifespan analysis, take or leave it, firmware updates, yeah. So really the big thing that they talk about restricting is actually creation of the pool, which is the entirety of making the model. So this is really saying Synology is going to really start locking this stuff down. I'm sure you tinkers and your hackers will be able to go in, SSH in, update the list of compatible hard drives and have no problems. I'm sure you're still going to be able to do that just because it's an open source software 
you can SSH in and modify those things. And honestly, Synology is not going to be locking that down because honestly, 99% of people aren't going to be doing that. And the people who do that are also not the ones who cost them money in support calls. So that is where I don't think that's going to be locked down. But for a lot of people, this is going to be a major impact. They do mention here that existing users who want to do a hard drive migration should be able to without restriction. And this is something that's really key. So if you're somebody who has a current like DS418 and you've got Ironwolf hard drives in there, you are going to be able to migrate them to the new model and place them in. And in theory here, you should be able to do that without any issue. And so they're not diving fully in just yet. I'm sure down the line they're going to remove that ability, but for now it does look like you will be able to do that. And one thing I do want to mention really quick here is their Synology's own drives and third-party drives certified to Synology. So ah, I'm not sure where this is at. There's a possibility here, and I'm not sure, I'm just guessing, that maybe they may be trying to open the avenue where basically Seagate, Western Digital, pay them a license fee, a certification fee, whatever, to use those drives and add in support there. I have no clue how this list is going to go. Currently, this hard drive certification list has been incredibly tight and has really just been Synology drives, plus like some four terabyte tiny drives that I don't know why they show up on there other than the fact that Synology wants to say there are other drives on there. There's stuff you would never use. But there's a possibility that they expand that list and maybe they do include those mass market drives with a fee. I have no clue. But that line there does have kind of open the possibility of that. So we will have to wait to see how that shakes out. I will be absolutely checking out and seeing if I can find that compatibility list. Okay, so now that's the overall gist of it. Is Synology going to be going out of business? No. Synology is focusing on, honestly, business users here. This is what they're doing. They are looking for people who are going to buy more expensive NASes, who are going to use support less, and that they can sell more and more stuff to. That's really what they're doing here. They were really able to grow their market from the home and consumer user, but I think that that now is getting saturated and I think Synology is going up against Dell and TrueNAS and really going up against these bigger and bigger systems. And I think that's what their goal is. I don't think they're going out of business anytime soon. I think they're focusing on users with more money and that sucks to hear. And I think right now they're kind of leaving the home lappers behind. I think that's their goal. I think they're going to keep the home users kind of with a B station as their idea, though I'm not sure if that serves a lot of people's needs. And the other thing is the market is now completely different than it was 10 years ago for these home NAS devices. And so for those tinkerers who want to be able to mess around and try different things and try stuff out, there is Asus Store, there is QNAP, there is all of the others like the Ugreens out there that are set up for those really tinkerers who want to be able to break stuff and install their own OSs and everything. And as somebody who's used them for years and years and years, it does suck and I will be looking at other options to deploy for my clients just because some clients do have different requirements and really kind of doing a cost benefit analysis that I've not done in a while for Synology versus their competitors. So now let's talk about what drives are going to be compatible and really the best place to go is BH Photo and we can look at the Synology hard drives. And part of this is if you look at their 16 terabyte plus models they're actually pretty cost effective. If I pull up and I look at a similar drive from Ironwolf's, right now the Ironwolf is a little bit cheaper. These two go back and forth becoming who is cheaper and who is more expensive all the time. And so if you just kind of look in a vacuum at those, it is not a very big deal. It's 320 bucks versus 300 bucks. And hey, it's first party. We're talking under 10% here, pretty small. And that is the position that I think Synology is trying to paint this right now. However, if you notice, there's a stark contrast between the capacity options listed by Seagate Ironwolves and the capacity options listed by the Synology drives. Synology is maxing out at 16 terabytes, whereas Seagate goes up to 24 terabyte drives very easily. 
And that is because we're not talking about their enterprise drives. Right now we're looking at Synology's Plus series. And they are limited to 16 terabytes with I think 18 terabyte drives on the way. If we look at their enterprise models, you can see there is a huge price difference. And this is only for the 16 terabyte models. They do have 20s, I'm just not sure BH Photo has them right now. And this is the big problem. Synology is going to be kind of artificially capping their units for any kind of cost benefit analysis to 16 terabytes or whatever value they want to put in here. And that's gonna be one of the big problems with this setup is you're not gonna be able to stick five 24 terabyte drives in a DS1525 plus and have a 100 terabyte pool after RAID 5. That is the big shift here is you are not gonna be able to do that cost effectively or even be able to purchase those drives because it's going to be more cost effective to stick with those bigger bay units. And I think that's almost why Synology is doing it is because hard drives are continuing to grow larger and larger and larger, but home users and business users' files are not growing at the same rate. So I think that is another reason why they're doing it is to almost artificially limit the drive size you can even buy. So that is one part. The next part is that it also allows Synology to have way more volume of sales. They are able to sell the NAS, and for most NAS purchases, hard drives amount for at least two thirds to three quarters of the total price of the NAS that you're buying. And by doing this, Synology is getting just more revenue, even if it's not as much profit from each dollar spent, they're getting far more revenue per purchase. The other thing is with that increased revenue and increased profit, you're also cutting down on your support calls because home users who spent 200 bucks on a NAS three, four, five years ago are actually a really large cost to Synology in support calls. They're way more likely to call support and have trouble with things and need help with them. And I think that's what Synology is trying to cut out here. Businesses, when they do have issues, one, they've spent a lot more money on your product and are a lot more expensive. And two, they're honestly less likely to actually be calling Synology support because they've got IT people who are actually running them and in there day in and day out. So I think that's part of the reason why Synology is doing this. Okay, so that's the overview. I've got a blog post here that I will leave a link down in the description below that I'm gonna kind of try to keep up to date with more information just as it comes on in. I'm really interested to see what the hard drive compatibility list looks like. I can see them using it as a way to get license fees and other certification fees from the likes of Seagate and Western Digital, or they may also just limit it to drives you've never placed in there. Only time will tell. I will be absolutely doing further videos in this. And until we actually get these units and actually are able to test them, we're not fully going to know what the ramifications are here. But at the end of the day, I think most people fall into one of two categories now. If you are somebody who does like the Synology, likes the product and likes what it has to offer for you, next time you're buying an NAS, you're probably going to be buying Synology drives. That is just the cost that now you have to equate whenever you're looking at buying a Synology versus their competition. And I think for a lot of people, especially those home users, those tinkerers, the home lappers, really are going to be looking more and more towards their competitors. Because those home lappers and tinkerers are the ones who want to put in the time to learn stuff and have all those different things. And the massive value that Synology has of just being super simple might not be as appealing. And so right now, that's all the information we have on this is a single German article. And we will have to wait and see how everything actually shakes out. So check out the link down in the description below if you want to see the most up-to-date version. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And honestly, what are your thoughts and feelings down in the comments below? I know a lot of people are going to say that this is the end of Synology, and I don't think that's true. I think in reality, it's the end of the kind of very consumer level Synologies. And I really think it is Synology focusing really on business users now. All right, well, those are my thoughts. Have a good one. Bye.